Hey everybody, welcome to Christ in Ministries. Dawn, Dusty, the kids, the grandkids, the dog, some of the neighbors. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Great. Grab your flag, baby. Grab your flag. Hallelujah. Sing a hallelujah. Jack's going for the guitar, so we're ready. You ready?
let your light shine, let it shine. Let the light shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. Blessings upon blessings upon blessings. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, Grandma.
Come on, yeah, yeah, go. I am having a problem that I love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's try that one more time. <laughs> favorite color, yellow. <laughs> Holy God. And pink. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
can get into the word. Yeah, praise God. <laughs> Teach him young. Praise God.
Welcome to the quiet church. Evening, guys. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Don and Dusty, Christ in Ministries. Check us out, ChristinMinistries.org. Hallelujah. Blessed and highly favored. The head, not the tail. Above and never beneath. Mm. Blessed in the city. Blessed in the field. Blessed going out. Blessed coming in. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Your children, Lord, your children. Question is tonight, where are you with your relationship with God and, and, and walking it out? Walking this life of faith out in Christ? You know, as the, as the storms rage around you and, and everything in the world seems to be going upside down and sideways. And where are you with your walk with the Lord? Because He is the foundation. The, the, the cornerstone by which everything is built on and we should be going to him we should be running into him the strong tower praise God that we run to is Christ Jesus is Father God amen hallelujah we thank you Lord yeah. so yeah we just ask you tonight where you at you know where where are you struggling with what are you what are you succeeding with you know what that's a good one where are you succeeding in your life with with, with Christ your walk with Christ because sometimes we spend so much time focusing on the negative that we forget to focus on the positive. You know, we've seen some friends that are celebrating their successes of late. And, and it really is in, in encouraging, praise God. And, yeah, so we just say thank you, Lord. Have your way tonight, in the next half hour or so. And we'll see where this conversation goes, huh? Yeah. Jack, how are you doing in Jesus today? <laughs> Praise God. So I, um, I think we get lost sometimes in the transition. Mm, come on. You know, transitions are painful because they're change. And mm -hmm. um, a lot of times that's extremely painful. And it's not because it's a bad thing. It's just is. It's, mm -hmm. it's just part of the process. And, and I think we look at um, we look at it, and we feel the pain or the change, and we um, recognize it or or sh see it from a perspective of pain. Mm -hmm. And um, I think if we change our mindsets, we can start to see things in a new light. Mm -hmm. Just like um, earlier today, I thought it was awesome because I. Um, Jackson and Bria were worshiping here, and I don't know if you could see it on the camera, but um, she was twirling, and, and he had his guitar, and she hit him, <laughs> and he went to hug her. So he went to hug her after she had uh, hit him. Mm -hmm. And do we do that as Christians? Do we, mm -hmm. do we see the change, the transitions, the, the, the things that we um, feel and sense and you know, when somebody steps on our toes, are, are we coming back to make sure they know what they did wrong? Or are we coming to them with the arms of love, just like Jesus? Because mm -hmm. when he came, he knew that he was going to lay it all down, that there was transition that was going to happen. And that's what happened. The cross was transition. It, it was a transition. It, he, trans, he, was a tra he, trans, he was in a transition when he came here from heaven to earth and then he again he was in, tri in transition at the cross going back to where he belongs but there was a process mm -hmm. and uh, and he didn't it, you know I wonder a lot of times we want it right now we want everything right now microwave we think, Christianity we think we've missed it because we yeah. We think God's missed it because we get frustrated and angry and um, undone. And, and I think God really wants us to know that he loves us so much, that he's real, and that he knows everything we're going through. And when he said to pick up our cross and follow him, that was transition. And all creation is groaning for the revelation yeah. of the sons and daughters of God. Yeah. And there's no junior Holy Ghost. Jesus and um, John left in the womb. There was, there was something happening. 
It's real. And we can know it instead of wondering and getting frustrated and uh, thinking that we've missed something or feeling all the fullness of our insecurities. Mm -hmm. And we can come into that place where we can sit with him before the throne and, and just be at peace in the midst of the storms. Look. Yeah. So are you feeling the transition tonight? And if you are, it's okay. Just ask God for his perspective. Yeah. If you're feeling the tug and the pull and the pressure, remember, diamonds come from pressure. Right? Coal put under pressure produces diamonds. Come on. When Jesus said, pick up your cross and follow me, he didn't say, pick up all the troubles of this world and all the struggles. What he said was, pick up your cross and follow me in such a way that you walk like me. The cross is to be able to walk through the storms as Jesus walked through them. He's our example. Our cross is to love everyone. Enemies, ha, those that plot against you. Yeah. On purpose. To or love on yourself, right. To love yourself. Accidental. Yeah. Oh, we just on saw that. On purpose and accidental. Yeah. Hallelujah. He died for all sin. Be quick, be, be, uh, what does it say? Be, um, don't be quick to anger, right? Wrath. Don't get mad. Walk in love and compassion and mercy for your fellow man. And that doesn't mean don't feel those things, because we all yeah. feel those things. It's not denying that we feel those things. Come on. It's denying their right. To, to write right. our life. Come on. Yeah. To, you know what I mean? We get to be, we get to come to the Lord and he, he is the author and finisher of our faith, the scripture says. So instead of allowing those things to write our story, we get to come to him. And we get to let the Father, the good Father that loves us, write our story. And we do that by um, submitting our tongues to him, submitting our thoughts, submitting our feelings, submitting our whole selves to him. There, there is a place where we have to come to that, that place of knowing that he's God and we're not. But he invites us in to the fullness of being one with him in spirit and in truth. Take every thought captive. That is against God in his word. Take and put your belief in his word and your faith, it will grow. You know, there's a point here where we, we look to God and he doesn't move as fast as we would like him to. He knows what's best for you and for me and for the grandbabies. His idea is to prosper us like parent, like a father who loves his children, not to do us harm. Yeah. Where is you where are you in your transition today? Are you a new creation in Christ? being sanctified every minute of every day by the blood of God, by Christ, and, and by the counsel of the Holy Spirit. Don't let the enemy condemn you. Don't let those thoughts you have control you that are not of God. Let the thoughts of God to love, to, yeah, to prosper, to, to hold. Just let him love on you tonight and receive that love. <laughs> yeah, where's your hope? Yeah, come on, where's the hope? Where's your hope?
hope. And uh, we, we as Christians, I mean, I hear it a lot. People think that hope is uh, not as important as faith. Always. But, but the scripture says these three remain, faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. And Jesus is our living hope, the scripture says. So there's, there's something incredibly important about hope. You know, we want we want the, the McDonald's faith. We want it all now. <laughs> the faith through. is now, right? But God says, faith works patience. Patience works, works endurance. endurance. And let endurance, endurance have its perfect, perfect work. work. So I think what a lot of us as Christians, we hear, you know, faith is the now, we need the faith. And, and there's a, a driving that happens that, that knocks a lot of us off our board. We end up um, walking away from faith because we can't do it. There's a place of living hope where you have to let Jesus be the one who, who fulfills the word in his season. Just like he had to wait to come. Can you imagine what it was like for the God of all creation to know the lamb slain before the beginning of time, but have to wait and watch the process of pain as his children fall? as they partake of things that will destroy them, as they, they make choices that harm them and harm others. How painful that must have been for the one who has perfect emotion. And he did that for us. He employed patience and love unconditional and living hope that's who he is so let him be that for you tonight let him be that living hope that speaks in those moments of pain and frustration and darkness let him be that transition the fullness of it where you can see from a different perspective where you can take every thought captive into the obedience of Christ is the anointed one, the word that becomes flesh and dwells, where you can employ that faith, working patience, working endurance, and having the fullness of the perfect work that God intends for each one of us. God says in his word that he gives us hope and an expected end. We have hope in the resurrected Christ, in the promises of God. Are you proclaiming the promises of God over your life? Blessed and highly favored am I. Holy God, looking forward to the second coming of Christ, hope, an expected end, eternal days with the Lord himself. Where's your hope tonight? Where's your faith? Where's your love? It says in, in, in the scriptures that we are new creations in him. We have to lay down the old man, just as he did. To transcend into that new creature that we were meant to be. To be images of Him in this world. To walk as light. To endure till the end. Don't let the enemy win. Don't let health and sickness and disease, don't let it defeat you. Because that's not in Christ, that's the, the enemy. That's temporary. That's all temporary. Yeah, come on. It's all Don't temporary. let the temporary things of this earth Distract change you. Come on. All right. your perspective of the eternal God and who He intends you to be. We get to set the foundation of who we are in Christ. Hallelujah. And that's He calls us a holy nation, a royal priesthood. So He He's He's the author and finisher. He's 
uh, it says that um, many are the plans of man, but God orders their steps. Yeah. It says he's a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path. He's the one who, who is able to do. Hallelujah. And to do that, just like he did, we get to speak. The scripture says life and death are in the power of the tongue. Choose you this day whom you will serve, blessing or cursing, life or death. And that comes through just like our daddy. Because we're born of his spirit. We're no longer who we were. We need to let that person go and know who we are now. Someone different. We're something different. We're something different in the earth. We're something different in all creation. And we need to speak from that place. And when we do that, it opens the way for God to bring forth that which he intends in the earth. And it's always good and very good. Hmm? Yeah. Praise Jesus. I don't know where else to go. I'm just saying praise God because it is a time of transition. And, hmm? I'm going to pass the time. In 15 minutes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So do you want to share a little bit about transition? How it feels and how you're... <laughs> yeah, I'm praise saying, God. Yeah. Just... Transition hurts. It's painful. Ask any mother that's given birth. <laughs> transition hurts. <laughs> you know, you think about it. Um, we transition into who we're going to become in Christ. And it's not a simple walk. Take one, I, I, I'll say it this way. When I was a soldier, I thought like a soldier, as Paul said. When I was young, I thought as a young. And when I, you know. But when I was a soldier, I thought like a soldier. I talked like a soldier. I, I reacted like a soldier. You know, and when I got out, it was a shock to transition to civilian life because going from a disciplined environment to a, you know, um, not so disciplined environment was tough. You know, the expectations were hard because you come out expecting you say something that gets done it, it, or you're going to do something, you say you do it, you do it. You know, when you get in the civilian world, if you have enough time, you might do it. You know what I mean? It, it, there's a difference there. And, and coming out of a walk of, um, being in the world, dealing with your dealing with the struggles of life and how you grew up growing in the streets, whether you're whether you were in gangs, whether you were in you know whether you're on the farm, whether you're wherever you are coming out of, come, you're even coming into a new in life. Church, yeah, it's still, it, even in the church, it's still different. You, there's a yeah. transition that has to happen. You must be you born have again. To, you have to have the self discipline, discipline. To want to change. Because he wants to help you change. He wants to provide you a way of, of living a little with hope versus living with no hope. And giving hope to others. And, right. And, and being that comes in, through self-control, which yeah. is the fruit of the Spirit. Self-discipline, control. You know, we, we look at, a lot of times we try to make, we try to sugarcoat this in Christianity. But it comes down to what we want. It comes down to who we want to become. It comes down to what we desire in ourselves. The scripture says that, he, you know, in John 15, 5, it says, He is the vine and we are the branches, right? And we, if we abide in Him and His Word abides in us, we can ask whatever we would desire. The question is, is, what is your desire? Is your desire, thank you, Jack, is your desire to be, you know, the old you, Walking in the in the old you, or, or or living in the new you, living in the in the uh, in the um, prospectus of being like Christ in the world, loving your children, loving your family, loving them no matter what. You know, loving yourself. This is the biggest part: is you have to want to change yourself. God will come in and help you change. God will give you, he gives you the comforter, comforter. The Holy Spirit abides within you. He's the one that's going to help you become more like Christ every day. The Apostle Paul says in the scriptures that he is not, when he was walking the earth, and he was deciding whether he wanted to go hang out with Jesus or stay and help the apostles, what, what, or, or the, the, the churches, he basically said, I have not yet attained the perfection for which I'm called to be, but I walk it out. He knew he had problems. He knew he had a thorn in the flesh, whatever that is. But he still had to deal with hunger and prison and, and you know, all the other things that came in life. It all came against him because why? He wanted to be like Christ. 
He wanted to be a living example to the churches so that they could keep going forward, the Gentile churches. Never mind the apostles who would... It, again, it's the church of Christ. There's ne neither Greek nor Jew anymore. Right? We are all one body. And the world needs to get over that. Because we are still trying to divide ourselves by nationalities. And in Christ, he says, there is none. There is none. But the question is, is where do you want to go with this in your own life? Because you're the example for your grandchildren. Do your grandchildren see you worshiping God? Or do they see you complaining and watching the, the evening news and, and getting upset at the world events? What do they see? I'm not saying sugarcoat it, but I am saying be the example that you want to be for yourself so that the people around you who see you, children are always watching. Children are, are little, little you know, computers Jeez. trying to suck up every bit of information they can as they mature and grow. So when you don't, when, when you can't get it to yourself, get in yourself to want to change. And yes, you may want to change, and it may be a struggle, and sometimes you may fall. And the enemy's going to be right there reminding you that you, you're not there yet. That's okay. But remember, oh, every day, mm -hmm. his mercies are new every morning. So we get to come to him fresh. Jesus says we get mm -hmm. to come to him fresh every day. We get to reckon ourselves dead to sin and alive in Christ, new every day. And we try to reckon ourselves a lot of times to what happened 20 years ago or what happened five years ago or what happened yesterday. But we need to come fresh every day. Just like we need a shower. You know what I mean? When we, I hope so. when we shower, we're, we're taking off the grime of the day. It, when we're in Christ, we're, we're holy. We're holy. We, we don't understand that or know it necessarily. And that's why we need to read the word to find out who we are and allow the Holy Spirit to fill that word. It's not just the black ink on paper. It, the scripture says the letter killeth, but the spirit bringeth life. Come on. So when we read the word through the spirit of God, yeah, come on. that's when the fruits of the spirit come forth. Because that's who we're supposed to be, just like our father. Mm -hmm. And so we come, but we get to clean ourselves off every day because we live in a dirty world. Just like mm -hmm. you're driving down the road with your car, the windshield gets dirty. You have windshield wipers. You got an you air know, filter. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> an oil filter. Great. And if a rock comes up and breaks it, you can get a new one. Safe light. <laughs> Let's talk about transition. <laughs> But it is transition. It's new, and uh, and we, you know, we judge our, you know, I'm going to say our windshields, you know, and that's 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 our outer selves, our you know, we need to allow God to be to be the judge, and to just trust what He says about who we are, and that isn't an easy thing. It isn't, but it is so freeing, so freeing when you can come to that place where you let daddy tell you who you are. Because man, he loves you. He loves every one of us. He calls us by name. He numbers the hair on our head. He has good plans for us. Yeah. Yes, he does. I had a thought and it went right through my head. <laughs> it's gone. Yeah, Jack, you tell him. <laughs> no, that's, thank you, the windshield piece. So as, as we, we, we get into this point of saying, you know, we spend most of our days um, looking in the rearview mirror rather than work, looking out the windshield. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not Come a mechanic. On. My son-in-law is, but I'm not. You know, I, again, the, the dynamic you of do this is... You a mean is, paint job, just yeah. saying. <laughs> we, 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 it's Don't okay stop. to glance in the side mirrors to see what's coming up on your backside or look in your rearview mirror to see what's coming. It's okay to glance mm -hmm. when you're driving, but you need to be looking forward. Mm -hmm. Jesus, when he, told the, when he came and he picked his apostles, he said, leave what you're doing, come follow me. Yeah. He didn't say look back. You know, if you think about what the angels did to, to Lot when they were going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, let's talk about that someday. But what did they say to Lot when they were running away? When he said, leave, do not look back. What did the wife do? She looked back. She turned into a pillar of salt. Don't keep looking back. 
because the, the, that that is those are the back. chains of your past mm. that are that are trying to bind you by the help of the devil to keep you in, in bondage rather than setting you free. Jesus said, "Follow me." When he said to the the, the young, um, it's okay to check your six stuff. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, that's <laughs> you know what, you, what I mean. That's what that's it's, for. It's better to have buddies to to, to watch your six. To remember to know what's happening. The the dynamic of this is is you know when Jesus was talking to the right. young uh, Israelite, and and he said to Jesus, "I've done all these things. How do I get eternal life?" And Jesus said, um, "Go sell everything. Leave everything." Or, or I'm on. I got. I'm mixing two different stories, but I apologize. But the guy, the, the young guy that was with Jesus, said, "Let me go." Jesus said, "Do all this and come follow me." And to the to the young Israelite, and basically it was the Israelite said, "Well, let me go bury my father." And what did Jesus say? "Let the dead bury the dead. Come follow me. Keep moving forward." Are we moving forward in our lives? Are we moving forward with our walk with Jesus? Are you taking new territory, as one of our friends says? Mm. Are you taking new territory for who's your, your life? Who's your daddy? <laughs> who's your daddy? Well, I ain't going out one. Or the old. But the, the, the dynamic end. of this is we have an opportunity. And if you read the Word of God and you just get a little bit of that Word in you, you can see what God has for you in it. They're, just, they're not just stories for historical purposes. They, they're guidelines for how we can operate and what God says we have. Yeah. Too many people walk around, even Christians in churches don't know exactly what they have. You know, they'll quote scripture all day long, but they don't understand what they have setting before them because they want to stay where they're at. They want to look to the past. They want to go backwards and stay, or stay right where they're at because they're nice and comfortable in the warm water. Sometimes. Well, don't be the don't off. be the don't be the frog in the in the warm water that turns into boiling. Right. Jump out and go live your life according to the word of God. Right. There, he gives you, he provides you hope, which is life eternal with Christ Jesus, His second coming, salvation is a hope. Being saved by Christ Jesus is a hope. And whoever believes in him has eternal life and the expected end. Our expected end, no matter what this looks like here, is going to be in a, a an eternal life with him. As long as you've chosen him. You, yeah, go ahead. You, you, <laughs> as long as you've chosen him. You know, because we can't do it. It's not about doing all the right things. Right. It's about holiness. Mm -hmm. And only he was holy. And he invites us into that place of yeah. holiness yeah. through his spirit, not in our own works, not in our righteousness, but in his righteousness. We yeah. can't do it. Yeah. We have to submit ourselves to him. Our righteousness is a filthy rags. Our righteousness, the, it, we are it's righteous. When you come to Jesus and you accept him as a, your personal savior, Lord, of lords, king of kings, shepherd of your life. When you accept him and his sacrifice and what he did for you, you take on the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We, you, you can now be, you can now boldly walk into the throne room of God as his child, not a creation, but a child. And you have all the legal rights as a son or a daughter belonging to the Lord, the King of Kings. Show me one king's son or daughter that would suffer. You know, they, they were taken care of. They were provided for. They had all abundancy, all sufficiency. All these things came unto them. And when they got sick, that king made sure he had all the doctors in the area coming to help. You're a king's child now. When you accept Jesus Christ, Jesus will sanctify you day by day by day. The Holy Spirit will call you into account. But the blood of Christ sanctifies you. Yeah, you're going to slip and fall. Yes, you're going to struggle. Yes, there are going to be days. Mama said there would be days like this. But when you know who your father is, when you know who Jesus is in your life, and you know that you are a co-heir with Christ Jesus, you have a hope. He gives you that hope to go, yes, I can defeat all enemies. In, in, in Psalms 23, it says, you, provide a ta you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, Lord. But you have to eat. But you got... <laughs> okay. You have to open up the gift. You Come on. have to use it. You have to employ your faith. You have to employ the Spirit. Yeah. 
and the works of the Spirit, love, mm -hmm. joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, meekness, and self-control, you have to employ the Holy Spirit. He's there for you. He wants to help. Do you have to let him? Yeah. As we wind this down tonight, we're going to go spend some time with him. Family. Praise God. Spend time with your family. Love on them. Even if you don't think they deserve it, give them more love than they can they could ever expect to get from you. And watch the fruit that comes from that. Yeah. It's amazing. Amazing. Jesus says, love your neighbor. He says, if your enemy comes against you, give them food and bread. Love on them. Thanks, Jack. Jack. Forever Jack. worshiping. Forever <laughs> worshiping in this house. Praise God. Lord, we love you. Yes, we do. Lord, we love you. Hallelujah, Jack. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.